Hi, I'm Kim. You're watching Kim Wilson TV. My channel is dedicated to helping victims of narcissistic abuse get free and stay free and stay free. So why did I say stay free twice? Well, I've received some very disturbing emails recently. And unfortunately, we've had some friends here at the channel who were free, who were no contact, who let their guard down and who reestablish contact with the narcissist. And that's what I want to talk about today. Now, we can't discuss this without discussing narcissistic injury, the narcissist rage. Now, what can induce narcissistic injury? Well, damn near anything. Honestly, I could look the wrong way. I could make eye contact with a waiter. I could wear a shirt that Trevor didn't like. I mean, anything could send him into a state of narcissistic injury and the ensuing narcissistic rage and toddler rage and flailing and the triangulation and the ghosting and all the bullshit that comes with setting a narcissist off. Now, of course, most of us live on eggshells when we're in the presence of a narcissist. We are extremely careful what we say and what we do in a desperate attempt to avoid initiating a narcissistic injury. Sometimes I was able to determine what it was that set Trevor into a state of narcissistic injury, and sometimes I simply had no idea. I mean, nothing seemed to have occurred, like there was no event, nothing that should have set him off. It could have been something as simple as me making a meatloaf when he wanted spaghetti. Now, narc injury puts everyone in a very, very volatile state. You have to understand that the narcissist does not experience an emotional injury the way a human being does. They live in such a shame-based reality, truly hating themselves, though they have got this incredibly delusional, twisted sense of self-entitlement and self-importance. So how does this conflict work? I mean, are they crazy about themselves or do they hate themselves? Well, the answer is both. And this is occurring because the structure of their brain is just not like normal people's. By structure, I'm referring to their capabilities to reason, to see things in their true perspective. They live in a state of delusion. They live in a state of constantly trying to create a fake person for the world to see. They are constantly trying to be something they are not. So they are always in a very emotionally volatile state. Now, once you ignite a narcissistic injury in one of them, like if you've seen it, you can't unsee it. It's pretty strange. And it will usually be followed by a death fight. Like they see a narcissistic injury as a mortal wound. Like you've tried to kill them. Making meatloaf instead of spaghetti is as if I tried to kill Trevor. It ignites this incredible rage, this death fight. You don't even know you're in a fight. Meanwhile, you're actually in a mortal combat to the death. Now, if wearing something they don't like or making eye contact with a waiter can send them into a spiraling death fight, a narcissistic injury that will ignite a mortal combat, imagine what leaving them does to them. Now, their greatest fear is abandonment. So you can't get hoovered. You can't go back unless you've left. Now, many of us leave many times, so the injury is compounded and compounded. So by the time you're leaving for the third or fourth or tenth time, as I did, you are igniting a absolute rage that sends them blinded, absolutely seeing red, blind in a death bite to the bitter end. Oh, hoovering is deceiving. It can appear to a victim to be a form of remorse, uh, like they're sorry for what they did, like they're sorry for the loss, that they want you back. No, this 
this is a weapon. This is a weapon of mass destruction. This is a nuclear weapon. This is the big bomb. This is a weapon of ultimate revenge. If you've left, you have committed the absolute worst act you possibly can. You have set them into an uncontrollable rage. You've left them. You have committed an act of their greatest fear. They dread, morbidly dread being abandoned. In fact, that's why they push the abandonment. That's why they force us to leave because they are so morbidly afraid it's going to happen. They just want to get it over with. They believe you're going to leave. So they make it impossible for you to stay. Truly, they have no ability to believe that we actually love them. They believe that we are frauds just as they are frauds and because they have no ability to love, they simply can't get their heads around the fact that we do have a capacity for love. This idea of love is very foreign to them. So they do believe you're going to leave anyways. Now they do believe you are untrustworthy. So they push and push and torture and torment. And finally the victim flees and the narc says, ha ha, I knew you couldn't be trusted. I knew you would leave me. I mean, it's all madness. And for a sane person to fully understand this. I mean, it's one thing to kind of understand it on a intellectual level, but to internalize it, I mean, don't even try. It's absolutely toxic. Okay, so back to the hoovering and breaking no contact. The only way that you can go back is if you've left. The only way you can be hoovered is if you've left. If you've left, you have committed the ultimate act against them. They are not hoovering you because they love you. They are not hoovering you because they are remorseful or they miss you. They want revenge. The hoovering is a weaponized tactic to destroy you. And every single time you fall for it, every single time you go back, it's going to get worse and worse. Now, I will say the first time I went back, it was probably a couple of months before shit hit the fan. The second time I went back, maybe a month. By the 10th time I went back, it was a matter of hours. The injury is compounded. Their need for revenge has accelerated. And the more times you leave, the faster and harder it's coming. And it's getting worse and worse every single time. Leaving a narcissist is a one-way trip. There is no return ticket. Once you've left, keep going. Don't look back. There is no way back. When I say leaving is a one-way ticket, I mean that. There is no possibility of returning. So if you think you're getting a return ticket, I'm telling you right now, that flight is going down and it's going down in a fiery explosion. Honest to God, in the last 18 months, two years, I have received at least 1,000 emails saying I went back and, oh my God, it was bad. And it was worse than the first time I'd left. I have never once, never once heard a happy ending. Now, unless you believe that you are so special, so unique, there is something so magical about your relationship with the narcissist that it is going to end any different for you. I'm telling you, give your head a shake. You are stepping on a really slippery slope. You are putting yourself in an extremely dangerous situation, one that could be avoided. If you are free, for God's sake, stay free. If you are no contact, stay no contact. If you're not no contact, ask yourself why. Go no contact. Save yourself. You deserve so much better than this. Don't risk it for God's sakes. I mean, you just don't know how far this creature has escalated in their need for revenge. If you're free, stay free. Nothing good is ever going to come of going back. I've never once heard it ended well, and it certainly never ended well for me. Guys, stay safe. I'm Kim. You're watching Kim Wilson TV. I hope you're having a great NARC-free day.